Okay. Cool. So uh, please clap and enjoy. Hello guys, uh, my name is uh, Rui Mendes. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, creating your own assistant or an action for Google Assistant. Uh, the slides are a bit blurred, I'm not sure why, but hopefully you will get everything that you need from that. So first, first of all, probably your first question is, who is this guy? Okay, so I'm first of all a beer enthusiast. I brew my own beer at home sometimes. Uh, which is, n thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is not relevant for this uh, specific presentation, but usually I put it here because it creates sympathy for the, from the audience. So, and if everything goes sideways, you blame it on the beer, so that's okay. Uh, regarding uh, development, I'm uh, probably, and currently I'm an Android tech lead at Author here in Porto, and uh, I'm basically, my team is responsible for all the Android apps, so if you have any complaints, you can talk to me later. <laughs> uh, and what will you present, basically? Well, it's your next question, and I will talk a little bit about theory, not really high level, because I actually don't know most of those, those parts, and just to give you an overview of actually the architecture and how that goes uh, on Google Assistant and on Action for Google Assistant, and also, uh, I will show you how to create your own assistant using Dialogflow, uh, then integrate it with the, the actual Google Assistant and using some uh, Firebase Cloud functions as well to add some application logic. So, first of all, why creating your action or assistant? Uh, one possibility is to add extra visibility for your app. It's another platform while, where your app will be available and will be accessible. And uh, it can work easily as a fact for your application, uh, an interactive one where the user actually just, just needs to ask uh, with voice or chat. Uh, accessibility reasons also. Uh, it's all, all, always important to, to think about of people that don't have all the means to, to actually use your application. And also Domino's Pizza has it, so why shouldn't you, right? Uh, how can we actually recognize and understand voice commands? Uh, I won't talk uh, very much about this, but just to give you uh, a clear separation of things, we, there are two parts of it. First, there is the speech recognition, which picks up the acoustic signals of, uh, of uh, um, a microphone and try to understand words are out of it. And then those output goes to the uh, natural language processor that actually uh, picks up those words, those sentences, and give it some meaning, some context, so we can understand what the user actually wants. So, how can we connect it with the Google Assistant then? Uh, I have this diagram that I stole from a, a blog, which is there, but uh, basically, in this, in this case, Google will be our speech, uh, Google Assistant will be our speech recognition, and also, the, the, the platform that we will use to do the text to speech. For the natural language processor, we will use Dialogflow. This part is where we will give some meaning to what the user actually said and try to understand what the user wants and send back a response for, for the user. But sometimes it's, help, uh, it's helpful that we have just some logic that is stored on our backend, so we need to add some extra code. And for that, in this specific case, we are using Firebase uh, cloud functions to, ro to run some uh, JavaScript code that will allow us to respond accordingly. This is on Firebase cloud function Node.js, but it, this can be in any language in any, uh, any of your backends, for example. So, Basic concepts. First of all, before actually building the, 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 the action itself, uh, it is good to give you some concepts that you might not be very familiar about because they are specific from uh, dialogue flow. First, intents. Intents is what we use to try to give meaning to a sentence. So it uses some training phrases that basically will help the, the system to understand 
to, to understand that a certain, a certain sentence actually fits this, this intent. And it corresponds to one dialogue turn, meaning that uh, uh, when the user are requesting some, so having some interaction with the assistant, one dialogue turn will be one, uh, one question from the user and one response from us. So this is what an intent means. So for example, if we have these two intents, hello and goodbye, with some, some training phrases, if the user says, hey, uh, the, the intent that will be triggered would be the intent hello, and we will we, and uh, we can send back the, the response that we actually want. So, outside of intents, there are entities. Entities are, you, are used to identify and extract useful data because sometimes on our intents, we want to parse a specific parameter, a specific value. Imagine that we are asking uh, the user uh, is age. We want to parse a number that will be that age. So there is an entity which is number and we need to know uh, to know the value that, in my case, is 25, so, <laughs> no, but, okay. Uh, then, uh, it can use as a parameter of an intent and, and also as a requirement for an intent, and uh, you can define multiple entries for the same entity. For example, for a number, uh, a number can be one, two, three, four, five, etc. so it, it doesn't have to be one single value. So, what, in this case, if we have an entity which is animal, and we have at this stage only two entries, which is dog and cat, and some synonyms that you can use to to, to better explain what that that entity that entry is. So if the user say "Hey kitten," it will basically uh, on the intent we will receive the parameter that we could parse an animal, and that, that animal was a cat. So. That's, that's the, the basic concept that I, can, uh, I want to show you right now. So let's start and create just a, a simple action for the Google Assistant so you can see actually this uh, going. So we, we, sh we will start simple. We will start just to create an action where the user will say, oh, suggest me a place. I want to travel. I want to go somewhere. And we will send them to Barcelona, Reykjavik, or London. A randomly pick, uh, we can, uh, uh, Basically, it, it, it doesn't have any context, only random. So now I will do something that I'm not used to, which is leave the slides and show you a bit of the console itself. So this is the actually console for the actions. One thing that you can actually do here is, which is important, is to actually define your action name. In uh, my case, my action name is Dr. Travel. Uh, I name it like this because for example, travel assistant you cannot use because assistant is a reserved word for Google. Also, João doesn't work that well as well. So I decided to go with Dr. Travel. And if you see here, uh, I, I have uh, just uh, an extra help for Google to actually understand how the pronunciation that works. Also, important here is the actions part, where the actions in, in our case will be on the dialogue flow. So we have, I already pre-created this so it go, didn't go sideways when I was here. So uh, I, we have this intent with, on dialogue flow. When you're adding an action, if you have a dialogue flow created, it will move to the dialogue flow, otherwise it will create it for you. So dialogue flow then, sign in with Google. Looks like server is unavailable. Perfect, I wasn't expecting this. So it's good, it's always, check, I think this is the account that I use, hopefully. So yeah, perfect. So this, I already created some, some intents for it, and uh, by default, uh, Dialogflow creates a fallback and a welcome intent, that is basically the entry point or, or for welcome intent is the entry point for your app, and fallback is actually when it can't recognize any command of the, uh, that he wants. So, in this specific case, we want to uh, use, back to our exercise, we want to simply um, show the user, uh, suggest a place to the user. So, I created this, this intent, which is simple suggestion. It has like uh, some, some things here, like where should I go next, I want to go somewhere. It doesn't have to have all the, the, the phrases in the world, but it, it is good to have uh, different ways of telling the same thing. So. You better, uh, you, bet, you get better results. 
Uh, in this case, we don't have a any parameters, and we will have uh, like three responses that Dialogflow will choose randomly to, to retrieve it. So uh, my initial thought was to have a Google Home here and show you uh, this interactively, but uh, due to network restrictions, it's not. Uh, in order to actually ask for for your uh, your your action on Google Assistant, you need to call it by her name, his name. So in this case, talk to Dr. Travel. Here's I can. Test version of Dr. Travel. Okay. Hello. How can I help you? And let me put here like suggest me one place to go. Reykjavik is the place to go. Okay. So he, in this case, he suggests me uh, Reykjavik, which is randomly selected by Dialogflow. So mission accomplished. And an action was created. However, functionality is, is not that great. It's just a random thing, okay? So let's, let's try to improve it and step-by-step uh, step creating something better. So in this case, we now we want to give a little bit context on it. And we will try to, instead of simply uh, randomly picking one city, we will give context to each city. So in this case, and for the sake of simplicity, Barcelona will, will be a sunny place, Reykjavik will be a snowy place, and London will be a rainy place. So if we go back to dialogue flow, okay, we can, whoops, sorry, I can go back here. And one, one thing that sh you come to mind that you, you need to parse what exactly is sunny, rainy, or uh, snowy. So. I created the entity's weather condition, uh, an entity that we, we will need to parse it. And in this case, we will have three entries, sunny, rainy, and snowy. And I put some, some things there. If you can see, for example, in sunny, I also put beach. In snowy, I also put skiing. So just to, to give better context on this. So if you go back to intents and you go to suggestion intent, OK, uh, this place, OK? I, I, as you can see, dialogue flow automatically uh, points out the arguments, uh, so you don't have to specifically su st uh, specifically tell them. And uh, we have one parameter that we will need to parse on this, and uh, finally our response. How can we handle this? We don't have uh, the the way to s to tell in dialogue flow. Oh, we want you to to return that if a parameter is this. So we will use a webhook for this, and we will go to our backend to get back to, to, to the user a response. That can be done here on the fulfillment part. In this case, it is on advanced stage. It will be this one. And I will save it for later. So we can define a webhook that we can use for our fulfillment. So back to slides. and just to give you an idea of how can we build that fulfillment. So as I said previously, we will use Firebase Cloud Functions and uh, no, uh, JavaScript for, for the code. So just to give you a first overview about Firebase Cloud Functions. Firebase Cloud Functions, for those who haven't worked with it, allows you to run JavaScript or TypeScript code on the cloud. Uh, it integrates easily with other features from Firebase. It has triggers for Crashlytics, for uh, Firebase database, for PubSub subscribers. So it has a uh, lot of function functionality. And you actually don't, don't have any maintenance needed. You only publish the, the functions there, and it will run. Okay. So just a small uh, information about the setup. You simply need to install the, the Firebase tools via NPM, log into Firebase, init the functions, and then you are ready to deploy it. Uh, when you create the actual, uh, uh, when you do run the command the init functions, it creates this project structure where on the root you have the Firebase JSON, which is actually where the configuration of Firebase is done, and index.js will be the main source code uh, in JavaScript that will actually uh, allow you to export functions for Firebase. For each export that you have on, on, on there, uh, it will trigger a new function on the Firebase Cloud Functions. So let's, pass, uh, let's see some code now and actually go to the fulfillment part. Uh, disclaimer here, I'm not a JavaScript developer, so bear with me with this. 
And uh, actually, the, initially, we, we need uh, to get to two packages, which is the actions on Google and Firebase functions. We need to initialize uh, a variable, which is app, which will uh, use the dialog flow uh, uh, logic. And then we put some fulfillment code. In order to do some fulfillment, before, before I show you actually the code for the fulfillment, I just want to give you a heads up on the main object that we, are, we'll, we will work with, which is the conversational object. The conversational object has all the information about the request that our webhook receives. It has information about which intent was called, what's the context, the raw input if you need it, also has the parameters there and allows, allows us to communicate back to the user. So we have mainly two, two, two functions there. One is ask, where we can ask the user to, to uh, something that, that can basically leave the microphone open for a response from the user. Uh, and you can also send basic cards and some options that the user can select. And we have close that say something to the user and ends the conversation. So. For, for, for example, for the welco uh, welcome intent, in this case, uh, in this case, I'm closing the, the, the talk, but uh, it could be something like this. We simply have uh, app intent. We parse the, the intent name, which is, in this case, welcome intent. We get the conver uh, conversational object, and we can simply call conversational.conf.close and say a string, and this will uh, propagate back to, to dialog flow. Going back to our actual um, our actual example, okay. So I've created the suggestion intent. So we need to actually understand uh, and do some logic on this. And on this case, I'm parsing the suggestion intent. I'm parsing the conversational object, and I'm also parsing the weather condition parameter because it's something that I need to actually uh, do my code. So uh, if we move and parse this weather condition. Okay, I know that there are switch statements on JavaScript, but I decided to go this way, okay? But uh, in this case, if it's sunny, we respond Barcelona. If it's rainy, London. If it's anything else, it's Reykjavik. So uh, with, this, with this in mind, we are basically ready to, we have our, our action ready to, to show you. So if I go back to my actions console, and if I say again, talk to Dr. Travel. All right, here's the test version of Dr. Travel. Hello, how can I help you? Okay, so let me just ask me a place. Uh, uh, let me put a rainy place, okay? To make it easy. It should give me London. Or no, it isn't London. Okay, perfect. So, great, great success. We actually now have some context on our conversation, but it's still very limited because it's only one question, one answer. It's not, we, you don't have the feel of a conversation. So let's do a little bit extra. What will be now, instead of simply saying, okay, you go to Barcelona. So you want to a sunny place, you go to Barcelona. No, we ask the user, okay, what about Barcelona? Okay, and if the user says yes, we suggest an hostel. If the user says no, we simply end the conversation and just say, uh, okay, I, I can't help you anymore. Uh, so how can we actually achieve that on Dialogflow? On Dialogflow, we need to use context. Context allow us to build uh, these uh, continuous conversations and to create this complex uh, conversation. You have input contexts, which are context that it need to be present, uh, it, it need to be set on the conversational beforehand. So for an intent to match, that context needs to be set. And we have the output context, which is basically the context that we will set after uh, an interaction, when our intent response is set a certain context. So with that in mind, I've created two, two, two different um, uh, intents, the accepted suggestion and the rejected suggestion, just to parse this, it, it, will have, uh, it will have as an input uh, context the suggestion intent, okay? And uh, for the fulfillment part, uh, our code is currently is like this. We change it just to actually 
instead of closing the communication, we now ask the user, so the microphone will still be open, and uh, then we use, uh, we, I created this function, but I, we use a function, we use the conversational object to set uh, uh, a context, which will be suggestion intent. It will have a, life uh, a, life, a lifetime of one interaction, meaning that only for one interaction it will live, and we will send the city name as parameter of that context. So on the next iteration, we can get that parameter. So it will create something like this on the output, and on the next intent, this, this, uh, this information will be on the input uh, context. So uh, we set the context for with each city, and uh, in order to actually parse this, uh, for the accepted suggestion, will be we will basically need to parse the city parameter. For that, once again, we use the conversational object. We get the context, and we get the, the specific parameter. After we have that city, we can decide and suggest an hostel. I omitted the code here because it it, it wouldn't make sense to put it here. And if it is a reject suggestion, then I just say sorry. I was not help, able, to, uh, able to help. Goodbye. And I actually don't need to to parse the city because it doesn't help. Uh, so before I show you what more you can do, I can go back to actions and once again talk to Dr. Trout. No, I can't. Here's the test version. Of I, I lie to you people. So I need to update here because I have a different uh, function for this specific action. So. As you can see, when you save it on Dialogflow, the changes uh, propagate uh, automatically to, to here. So let's go talk to Dr. Travel. Dr. Travel. Okay. Safe day. What can I do for you Perfect. today? Perfect. Uh, suggest me a sunny place. What do you think of Barcelona? Okay, now she, she, she asked my question. So I say, oh, it seems a good idea. Okay, and uh, it, it suggested me a hostel in Barcelona, so it is something more natural. It, it actually it goes as a conversation and not only a question and uh, answer, and that's it. So it's more natural. When creating an assistant, it's important that you give importance to this because the more natural it seems, the better uh, will be the, um, the the usability for the user. So uh, actually, on when I first thought, uh, thought on this presentation. I would imagine that I could fit basically a lot more things on it, so I couldn't, okay. Uh, and, uh, but I, I had some notes on this so I can show what else can you do to give you an idea. One important part that you can actually do when our um, login service. Uh, for that, you will have to have a OAuth 2.0 server that can be uh, used to make account linking between your, use, uh, your account and Google account. And if you have that, what will happen is when the user asks for, in this case, for Dr. Travel, if the user has an account, it proceeds to Dialogflow. If not, uh, we will prompt, uh, uh, if it's a Google Home, it will prompt on the Google Home app, but if it is your assistant on the phone, it will prompt on, the, on your phone. Uh, web page or web view with, uh, with uh, uh, it's basically your login, so you can put the credentials, you make the account, linking, uh, account linking, and after that, it will send your token to Dialogflow, and on the conversational uh, on the conversational object, you actually can parse that token, and you can do uh, logic, which is more focused on your users, and you will have even more context on it. So it's not simply any user; it's that user that you already know, and you already know his behavior. So another thing uh, that I would like to mention is that when you're using Dialogflow, you can integrate. You are not uh, just doing it for Google Assistant. You can integrate it with multiple platforms, for example, Slack, Facebook Messenger, Skype, uh, Telegram. So you have a, a whole world of platforms where you can use it, for sometimes with voice, sometimes with chat, but it's, you can reuse the same code for these platforms. Uh, and this was something that I would imagine, uh, that I would like to talk a little bit more, but I can't. But basically, you also can integrate Dialogflow with Android. There, uh, Dialogflow has a pretty good library for this. 
it allows you, for example, if you have an, an Android application and it makes sense for you to have voice commands on it, you can easily do it with Dialogflow. It allows you to call directly Dialogflow. You don't go through Google Assistant, so it's a direct call. And it can be used for both chat platform or a voice assistant on your app. And uh, it, uh, it simplifies a lot the, the, the job because the library already has the speech recognizer from Android uh, embedded on, the, uh, on the, the library. You only need to handle this text to speech if that would make sense for you. So as a conclusion, creating a complex a system, which was not the case in this, uh, takes its time. And uh, you will fail a lot, OK? It leads to a lot of frustrations. I've been there. Uh, also, uh, in my opinion, Dialogflow is the, is the best platform available to do the natural language process. Uh, and in my experience, I work with, uh, with uh, creating actions for Google Assistant, creating actions also for Amazon Alexa. And when creating with Amazon Alexa, we, you, can, uh, you can't actually use Dialogflow. So uh, it's, it's a bit worse working on that and the, the, the results are, uh, are not that as good as uh, with Dialogflow. And when you actually use the account linking and web books to actually do the fulfillment, it opens up possibilities for infinite options that can make sense for, for you guys to use on your own application. So thank you. That's uh, basically what I have for you guys. And uh, any questions, just. Great. So. Um Thank you so much. Any sure. questions? We have a few, so let's start with this one. Hopefully I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> if it's JavaScript, please don't. <laughs> a, a basic one. Uh, conceptually, would you back the assistant with some call center? Because uh, I guess uh, you know the user experience with the assistant can be pretty discouraging. And at some point, if the conversation of Dr. Trevor is not going well, you would rather, you know, stop it and then switch it to the to the human, just not to get Dr. Travel that pissed. Yeah, definitely. I think th th that should be, uh, of course, it depends on, on what you are, so what on the case, uh, there are certain ads when we will not have a, a call center. But for example, let's imagine the, the, the case of Oslo World. We can start by having just uh, a simple interactions with a user st saying, okay, uh, try to actually answer the, the question that the user is asking for. And then if we, we can have on our backend, on our fulfillment, basically on the webhook, some, because the conversation object returns a conversation token. So you actually know exactly uh, all the steps that that conversation has uh, had. So you can understand by that, you can have some, some, some measures there that you can use to actually understand, okay, this is going well, this is not going well, and if it's not going well, then redirect to human, because this doesn't replace a human, especially when you are uh, trying to solve a problem. Uh, sometimes we don't predict uh, all the scenarios, and it's pretty difficult to actually predict all the scenarios, so it is always a good idea, definitely, to have a fallback where everything doesn't go, go, go well, if it is a, a call center, for example, as your example, to have also the human assistant to, to actually help on this. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another question? Um, so you mentioned the Android SDK, the yeah. integration. Uh, what I was wondering is a bit different is that if I'm using the uh, Google Assistant on my phone and I have an app installed that can handle uh, whatever the intent is that I'm, I'm, I want, uh, is it possible to integrate directly with that app instead of going through uh, a webhook uh, on a backend? Uh, actually, if you go through Google Assistant, you can't because Google Assistant uh, needs to have a URL that he can call. For example, on Dialogflow, he needs to actually go through a URL so you can't directly call the, 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 the app. What you can actually do is that you go to a backend, you have some trigger on your backend that basically sends a push notification of if you have some, some socket connected or something, you, you send that information back to your app and you trigger something on your app and you know, oh, this user is trying to do something. That you can do. You can't call directly uh, the, the app, OK? 
okay? For that, you have like uh, now the, these new things to interact with the Google Assistant. Your app can be, can, can say, hey, I'm here, I can book an hostel for you. So, but in this case, you are creating an action for Google Assistant, so it needs to go on the cloud and then uh, decide. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Cool. Um, any more quick ones? Great. So thanks again to, to Rui Mendes. And, uh,